Indian classical music is traditional, rich, beautiful, intense, and yet relaxing and meditative. You and I are living in a typical 21st century life with gadgets and information overload. How are we going to connect these two worlds? Or is it even possible? Or does it even make sense? Let us face some hard questions together. Can you imagine starting your Indian classical music journey without joining a vocal or instrument class? Do you think you can start Indian classical music exploration without musical talents? Do you think it is easy to get started with Indian classical music along with daily responsibilities of your busy lives? Can you imagine working professionals benefiting from Indian classical music? Do you think it is easy to groom Indian classical music lovers within your family in today's times? Is it easy to find safe spaces around you to emote, express and simply bond over Indian classical music? Are you able to sit through or appreciate long Indian classical music concerts Without getting bored, do you even see the need to? Are your children supported enough on a regular basis to enjoy Indian classical music? Can you imagine a common man equipped enough to study or research on Indian classical music without being a music student? Can you imagine a wholesome Indian classical music exploration experience in the digital space? Can you imagine learning Indian classical music for any other reason outside of stage performances? Have you imagined the power of Indian classical music to heal our communities in today's uncertain times? Have you experienced the emotional and intellectual appeal of Indian classical music to connect with yourselves and others? Have you thought of long-term benefits of Indian classical music to de-stress and tackle anxiety? There are so many more questions we have in our minds. The not so surprising answers to all the questions is no. We tell you it is possible with love, with consistency, with technology. It is possible at Shrota House. We are here to connect beautiful worlds and let the magic of Indian classical music blossom in every home. Subscribe to Concert Express, a classical journey where you regularly listen to Indian classical music and just open up and express while seamlessly learning about the art forms. Concert Express by Shrota House is a program which is regular relaxing, rejuvenating, for we believe that listening is the beginning of learning. Shrota House takes each of you to the beautiful world of Indian classical music. And we hope to see you at Concert Express, a classical journey. Thank you. Namaste, greetings to one and all. Thank you so much for joining us in this wonderful panel discussion hosted by Shrota House. 
perhaps the first of its kind organized with musicians and parents on the same panel. My name is Madhumita Bhaskar and I'm the founder of Shrota House. Our team is extremely passionate about the idea of taking Indian classical music to newer audiences, especially little children and making Indian classical music appreciation uh, a seamlessly beautiful part of our lives worldwide. Our venture is named after Shrota Gan. Shrota is a listener and um, we are here to celebrate the power of music listening um, while supporting this pre precious section of audiences um, who are pillars of our musical ecosystem. Today we have some amazing panelists with us all of who are experts in their chosen field of study and research. I would like to introduce each of them very briefly. We have Dr. Chaitanya Kunteji, uh, one of the India's most senior musicians, musicologists and performers of Hindustani music, a harmonium player uh, who plays solo as well as as an accompanist, a professor and an educator. We have Dr. Kostov Karanthi Ganguly, a professional vocalist practicing Hindustani Sangeet an engineer who holds a doctoral degree in electronic systems from IIT Bombay, a budding musicologist and an expert in music technology. We also have Mrs. Selvakani Selvaraj, a senior business professional and executive coach, currently heading HR for McKinsey, an enthusiastic um, uh, lover of art, theatre and literature, and currently undergoing PhD in psychology. She's also a mother of a very adorable preschooler, Yugan. And today, Mrs. Selvakani is representing a very vibrant community of moms and working women professionals. We also have Mr. Mahendra Chavan, a senior software professional currently with Microsoft, an alumnus of IIT Bombay, a music lover and learner, and a father of two very talented little girls. Today, Mr. Mahendra is representing the dad community, the working professionals who are fathers. Thank you. A very warm welcome to each of you um, on behalf of uh, Shrota House and uh, taking out time for this discussion today. I guess if each of you could very briefly answer this question for our audience today. How deep is your association with any Indian classical music form, A as an artist and B as an audience? Uh, I would like Dr. Kunte to please uh, begin with uh, his answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madhumita. Uh, I firstly like to thank you for uh, inviting me into this discussion. And you know, Shota House is always being a platform that uh, makes uh, me think in a different manner. Uh, so. As an artist and as a listener, I think uh, both the sites are of the same coin, actually. Uh, unless and until you are a good listener, you cannot be a, an artist. Uh, yes, but of course, for being a good listener, you need not to be an artist. But for being an artist, it's uh, uh, Needless to say that you must be a good listener uh, and appreciator. And for me, uh, this journey actually started when I was a kid. And usually in any middle class Maharashtrian family, uh, the main source of music at my uh, generation, at least, uh, was all India radio. Like my mom used to play the radio. Uh, from say 30 in the morning and like until night 10 30 or 11 the radio was always on and it in a way uh, uh, gave me a lot of exposure to different kinds of music not just hindustani art music or classical music but also folk music then marathi natya sangeet or bhavgeet or film music so I think that kind of exposure as a listener uh, when I was a kid, that uh, contributed immensely in my musical understanding, develop, 
development of my musical understanding when i was not learning music actually later on when i started learning music and in due course of me being an artist i think that listening or that exposure to music helped me immensely and of course uh, in hindustani music there is a kahavat or a paraphrase that das sikhna 50 manan karna aur 50 sunna so unless and until you listen to other musicians you cannot be uh, bloom uh, and even in the yester years it was a tradition that jo talimdar log hote the wo apne ek talim hone ke baad anya kalakaron ko bhi sunte the so it was a practice that having a good talim you have to listen to other artists from the same fraternity so i think uh, being a listener is a part and parcel of uh, your growth as an artist uh so this was the first point and for uh, just for being a listener i think it's very much important uh, part of my personal life and in general indian uh, uh, society because music uh, and especially hindustani art music or classical music uh, in a way elevates you to another uh, mental space whatever uh, you are hounded with your daily uh, clutches you can elevate yourself from all that and and that's why i actually most of the times uh, raga sangeet is uh, called as spiritual music so it is not spiritual in the sense of religious spirituality but i think it's more psychological elevation and especially in today's time when we have a lot of psychological pressures work pressures and uh, the overall socio cultural atmosphere is very disturbing and i think in such times raga sangeet or hindustani art music is uh, definitely a cure or a medicine for your mind and in that sense uh, listening to rock music is i think very much important first of all pleasure being a part of this esteemed panel and after chaitanya nadaja's such insightful uh, conversation it's very difficult to pitch in but i'll i'll just extend the same on the same lines so let me decipher these two words listening and being a practitioner into two parts each so in the listener side one can be a music appreciator and one can be a music connoisseur mm. now for music appreciation it turns out to be a very biological phenomenon so one need not have to learn music to appreciate music and the examples are plenty for example let's take the lullabies uh even infants of 6 months of age they also react to the like consonant intervals of the lullabies and they don't have to learn music to appreciate it so musicality is embedded in the human physiology itself but when it comes to connoisseurship then the enculturation is very much needed uh which we call a sanskar in in hindi so then you have to be part of that culture you have to know what are the like good examples as well as what are a not so good example so if you don't know the two extremes you can't uh, really create the canvas of your own understanding so this is the part of the listenership the other part is for the musicianship uh, again i would like to decipher this into two parts one is being a musician and one is being an artist and for artist i'm referring more to a stage artist or concert artist who sings for the audience mm-hmm. so now being a musician or a guru you you of course have your own purpose to like enculturate others but who are concert musicians one of their like major responsibilities is to meet the expectancy of the listeners we sing for the listeners in concerts 
So then listening is as important. We have to know what are the music, the listeners expecting from us. And one, one thing we all have pointed out, noted, like uh, we go to the stalwart uh, musicians concerts and maybe the rag, the bandish we have learned or listened many times, but still we get a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. And if you talk in terms of music psychology, those are like beyond expectancy. We don't expect that to happen. So those are pleasant surprises. Mm -hmm. So if you are not part of that listening community, not the audience, that what are the high points of a concert that the audience engages in, then you can't be a successful performer to do this, like exchange the same role. So it's always in a circle. And first of all, like whenever you are on stage, your first judge, first listener is yourself. So that's why we are so particular about, say, monitor speakers, because first we have to listen to ourselves and then we worry about the music and other things. So, yeah, so that's that's uh, my two cents about this. So wonderfully put. I, I am uh, just at loss of words of how beautifully you uh, have classified it all very clearly for us and also helping me to maneuver through this, the rest of the discussion. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Kostu Ganguly. Uh, I would now like to uh, listen to, you know, um, uh, Mr. Mahindra Chavan, uh, if you can share a little bit about your musical background and uh, your thoughts on this question. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Madhamita and Shrota House, to arrange this. And, you know, I feel extremely privileged to be part of something like this. I, I haven't been into something like this uh, throughout my life, even though I am a music lover, but I would call myself as a very raw music lover. You know, I haven't been into a systematic, uh, you know, uh, any system, uh, you know, uh, that, that, you know, teaches music or something like that, you know, from my childhood, you know. Uh, so there are three very interesting perspectives that were shared by the great, uh, uh, you know, uh, panelists that we have today, right? So the first one that Kunte sir shared, right? So uh, as he said, right, music is something like, uh, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, some way of medit, uh, some, some form of meditation, right? So it gets, lets you get above your daily you know course and you know get you lets you get beyond that and i think i align to that you know that's the first thing the second perspective that uh, you know ganguly sir uh, was sharing was uh, the first he said as uh, there are two parts as he shared right the first one was the appreciation part and even an infant you know is able to appreciate uh, uh, you know uh, the, the 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 songs right so the uh, as he was saying right so again, I align to that as well. So, and I'm more on that, uh, you know, aspect, uh, you know, I feel even though I'm not trained or I don't understand the language, uh, uh, you know, of music, but I'm definitely an appreciator of uh, all kinds of good music, especially, you know, uh, as, uh, you know, the Bhav uh, Geet or even filmy music or even, you know, any kind of bandish that is, you know, inspired by a raga or something, something that feels really melodious, you know, but has some some uh, you know uh, some uh, proper you know kind of a structure to it right uh, something that you know uh, I, I really get uh, attracted to that okay um, so that is the you know uh, the second aspect that he was sharing right the third aspect that he shared is you know in order to appreciate music right you need to be part of that culture and you, you need to understand that language and that is something where i am really looking forward to you know uh you know move on and you know even my kids i would really love to have my kids you know get into that uh, zone and be able to appreciate and you know uh and as he was saying right so uh, as an artist and as a listener and in fact listening itself is an art right so i i'm really looking forward to get uh, you know uh used to or you know get uh get or learn learn that art actually mm -hmm. wonderful wonderful thank you mahindra uh, it's a very beautifully put uh, thought um, and you're able to relate with uh, whatever is being spoken and uh, very nicely uh, shared with us. Thank you so much. Thank you um, so much. I would also listen to, um, you know, request Selva to please share your thoughts. Sure. Thanks, Madhu and all of us. Uh, yeah, it's just a wonderful time and I'm really honored. Um, you've asked about my familiarity with music, uh, Madhu. Uh, I'm not from a uh, quote-unquote musical family, but I come from a family who's really uh, interested in music, music appreciators, I may say. Uh, thank you for that wonderful definition because it's really helping us structure our thoughts also. My mother is very uh, uh, passionate about music. She didn't have the opportunity to learn at that age in her time, 
so she really wanted me to learn so i have a formal training as a carnatic vocalist but uh, it's amazing that uh, on a very uh, retrospective way that i didn't really appreciate it at that point of learning as as a piece of meditation or in a spiritual man i was mm. i went to a um, um a hindi class i went to a samadha class and i went to music class it was like that as a child going to school it was another thing that I, my mother wanted me to learn mm. now i carry that passion for my child who's just 4 years old um amazing sensibilities about everything that comes uh, the world around him um so hindustani music is very new for me although i'm familiar with other forms uh, including western pop and reggae which has its own um, it ho its own dhun its own uh, rhythm to it and uh, what i because i'm also very passionate about art forms like theater literature uh i can understand that um music is a way of life uh in a sense and uh, it tells you about your world is what i've understood mm. uh i'm here really more uh, to learn your perspectives and i am i am representing a very proud to represent a typical parent community even within that a typical mother persona <laughs> so um where i have a lot of passions uh i hope that uh, my son uh, yugan it becomes his own personal choice and his own passion rather than my pressure for him to pursue um yeah I, i'm really looking forward to it uh, i i really uh, i am uh, i'm sure it's going to be a very thoughtful a very uh, thought provoking discussion thank you again for the opportunity mother thank you so much selva uh, i totally get you i am also a mom uh of a four year four and a half year old uh i get when you say you know uh, when you have your passions and then you encourage you want to encourage the child to develop their own passions uh and when it comes to a, a topic like um, hindustani music it's a huge uh it's like an ocean like we've heard this over generations of musicians i don't know when we'll actually realize it we realize it as we go by the day that it's actually much bigger than what uh, people have told us and the realization is part of the learning process right and when you have an ocean in front of you and there are so many other oceans you know science spirituality uh, math languages all of them are oceans in their own way and um, uh, i i'm i'm uh, very fascinated by the fact that hindustani music um, is a good amalgamation of uh, a lot of depth there are various levels of learning that uh, you kind of are uh, um, uh, you know comfortable with at various stages of your life and uh, so when you have different layers of uh, you know getting exposed also right just visual exposure um the environment and then the music itself and then a guru to explain to you what the music is so all of these layers right so where is the most uh, what's the most challenging you know layer um for uh, a musician or or a music connoisseur and a parent i think we'll put the focus more on the parent as to where do you think um uh, you know where where is the most uh, it's the most problematic kind of layer that we could address uh, in any which way we can as i said uh, and mahendra before you joined i was uh, mentioning that um, i was talking about this with uh, other parents other friends and parents in my uh, workplace and in my circles um there are three challenges top most that comes to my mind uh, there could be more as well uh, but top most number one mm-hmm. um some background about this right uh, so there's a lot of study about this whole attention span mm. a lot of research that's gone into figuring out what is an attention span for children what is an attention span of humans mm. the different studies giving you different numbers mm. but for the kind of uh, student population that shruta house caters to between 3 to 8 it's it could be anywhere between 2 to 10 minutes or 12 minutes let's say okay i feel person that's a lot <laughs> because <laughs> every second counts in that sense uh, so number one challenge is how do uh, how do we really 
increase or utilize the available attention span for children to pursue what they like uh, in the context of musical journey. That's number one in the, the attention span and all that. Second is uh, I'm hearing and I'm also experiencing this and I'm also a gentle parent. There's a school of parenting called gentle parenting. We've, I have seen a certain kind of parenting style from my parents who believe that uh, parents know the best for children. I should follow what they say in the interest of my long term. So I don't ask them a lot of fundamental questions. Hmm. You know, I follow and then I will realize it later. That's the parenting style that I have uh, been used to. Hmm. But I am a new modern parent, you know, so <laughs> who'd like to be friends with my child, uh, who is looking at every small thing. So abundance available for the children. If they don't wish to do it, I don't want to force them. Mm. In that sense, I don't want to exert my authority as a parent to make them learn, but I'd rather like influence them mm. as a friend, as a music appreciator, let's say. So therefore, the role modeling starts from me. Mm. But I am a working parent, mother, <laughs> wife. What, what not, you know, and I'm struggling, I must say, and I see a lot of my friends as mothers uh, struggling on two angles. One is that my child wouldn't listen to music unless I listen to music. Mm. I cannot just put some bandish for him to learn, listen on his own, mm. unless I have paid attention. I am partnering with him in listening activity. Mm. Uh, I must admit, I'm not a great example of that at all times. There are pockets of it, mm. uh, but I'm not able to really be that role model that I would like for my child uh, in co-creating that uh, mohol. Mm. What we call sanskar is a very big word. I start with a, uh, you know, uh, what is in my control, which is in the mohol of my house, home. Mm. So what should be the right mohol for the children? We know what should be, but how do we really bring it to life how do we really bring it to practice if mm. my child says i don't want to learn is it okay for me to say okay mm. how long is it okay where is the inflection point where i say no you have to there's a bit in uh, manan they say no you force them for some some pressure mm. like i know that i learned music long ago but i remember all of them right now if i have to remember i can remember it because i practiced thousands of times mm. even when i died didn't like it I'd like to really get your perspectives on where is that balance? How do we really bring that balance between letting them explore, find their own license, and express like versus mm. um, handholding is still soft, but uh, some sort of uh, exertion as a parent without uh, that becoming a backfiring, you know, mm. they don't want to repel it. Right. I think Selva, I think that's, I think a great point that we kind of gather from what you said is that um, there is an altogether parenting challenge where kids uh, know what they want very early. Okay. And uh, to be able to uh, like um, uh, to, to give them the music that uh, is good music. Okay. Which is, uh, uh, you know, it, it is some, it's as much a challenge as to give them anything else. You know, it's, it's part of a lot of things. Like we said, there's a big palette out there you know and to be able to fit this um music say hindustani music in their lives uh, requires some guidance and some kind of a support or mentoring or something that um helps the parents to to at least achieve some bit of that uh, mahal that you mentioned right so that kind of mentoring uh, probably is something that uh, maybe dr kostov also got when he was uh, young right so i think that played a huge role Right, some mentoring, and also um, a consistent uh, support. So even if you lose your motivation, so motivation comes in waves and it goes, especially in today's times. You know, so many things to handle. But again, somebody to be there for you, uh, a, a group or you know, uh, a mentor or somebody like we say guru for when you're learning music as such. But in general, for parents also, uh, we need some kind of a support system. Don't you agree, Kostov, how, how important is a support system uh, in, um, you know, parenting today and especially getting music into their systems? Yes, of course, I can't agree more. And the era is very different from when we grew up as a child. 
So the challenges as I see are, again, I, I like objectifying. So I'll, I'll again do the deciphering. So one is of course the logistic challenge. One is the practical challenge. The other one is is uh, the engaging engagement challenge. Yeah. Now, uh, I'll also take the line from what Silva had just said about the attention span or attention mode. So the underlying cognitive processing is there in the cognitive mode. So music can be heard in different layers. So now again, like put focus on the word hearing music, listening to music, learning music. So these are all different cognitive phenomena. So you can be passively listening to music. It just runs in the background you learn a lot of things just by virtue, just by not paying attention. Mm -hmm. And a lot of experiments had happened, even, even in pregnancy, people play good music and that kind of enculturation happens. So there is a biological phenomenon happening at that uh, level. So passive listening is very important, like the mahol you were mentioning. So create a mahol, they can't help not listening to music. Yeah. So they will be acquiring the taste. So this is a very much acquired taste. And you have to do a little hand holding to acquire them to the taste such that they start listening. Mm -hmm. Now, in listening, there are different layers. For example, there is a pleasurable listening for elderly men or like persons. So they listen to music for pleasure. There is no learning or engagement happening directly. Mm -hmm. But for like children to get into this acquired taste, they need proper engagement. Mm -hmm. So now one good part could be gamified. And I would say from my uh, humble experience that like rhythmic attention is little easy to acquire than melodic intricacies. Like for example, if there is a khayal music going on, put them play the tal on their hand. And if there is a vilambit bandish going on, let them know the space, let them know why is the sum coming, let them attend to the whole avartan and come to the next sum. So that 40 seconds they're paying attention by their own intention. So that intention part is very important, that active listening get them acquired to gather or develop that taste. So that's very important. So, and of course, live music. So when we uh, grew up as children, we had only resources of cassettes. So maybe we had 10, 20 cassettes at home and yearly once we could go to like listen to that stalwarts live in person on stage so that was a huge incentive for us but now with the abundance of material with hundreds of hours they don't even continue to listen so maybe make it a point when you start listening to a track finish it so that perseverance so for example you know when we started uh, learning we were first told to sit for three hours at a stretch because if you want to be a musician and sit like sing for a mehfil for three and a half hours, you first have to sit. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of practices or make it objectifying, make it gamified to get them to attend that, to engage with that. And then they'll acquire the taste. I think this is the best way possible I, I see in this part, current challenge. Let the child know what to follow in a one hour concert or half an hour concert is very important mm -hmm. because there are a lot of different mechanisms going on and when you start listening to a Vilambit Bandish, you are like at good chance to get lost, which is very natural. So to let them know what to follow, what to expect is like to channelize their energy into the music. That, that's very important. Great. Absolutely. Uh, I also resonate with what you just said. And in fact, I would also like to ask Dr. Kunte if, um, you know, when you have, when you're learning, um, uh, you know, the skill of performing music right um, the way you listen to music is much more keen i think you're, you you're listening uh, to it with a lot of lot more attention like versus how dr kostov said it's for pleasure so for children or for novice adults like i i think uh, both of them start with the pleasure part or maybe the first impression they get may or may not be good depending on what was the um, uh, you know, the situation in which they, they heard it. Did they listen to it in a marriage hall or, you know, what is the first time, what is the first experience they had? And this is irrespective of whether it's a child or somebody is very new to the art form, you know. So a lot of time that first impression kind of just comes on your way and you don't want to explore it further just because how that happened to you at that time. Right. So when it comes to, um, uh, uh, you know, general households, a lot of them say, oh, you learn music because you want to perform. Right. And you want to learn, learn, learn. And that whole joy of experiencing something, the pleasure part of introducing the music through a lot of pleasure kind of gets sidelined. And that's not even something that parents want to invest in, in terms of time, money, 
or you know any other uh, way right so i would like to know um what would you suggest uh, this new bunch of parents um on on this front yeah uh primarily i think uh, the new parents should do at least two things that uh, just keep playing the music when you are having general conversations or you are having food with your kid like i have observed that in last few years there is a, a general practice of uh, feeding the kids with uh, giving a tab and cartoon that mm. is a, a quite common practice now because unless and until you play a cartoon uh, the kids don't concentrate on eating this kind of notion is very uh, widely spread but i think you can replace the cartoons with something uh, to do with music mm. uh but my my personal observation is that uh, at a very early age if you start uh, giving the kids something to do uh, with visual signals mm. always like when you are eating you are having visual signals not audio signals only um, so they are not uh, going to develop their audio signals or uh, perception of audio signals mm-hmm. very well mm-hmm. uh, and that is a very important uh, aspect of music that you depend only on audio signals not video audio signal or audio visual signal um, if the child is playing you can just on a background you can uh, play music as kausu kanti uh, mentioned the passive kind of listening is very important in the early phase mm. uh, and later on uh, as he uh, pointed out that you can then uh, tell the child that what is to be uh, appreciated about this music the nuances of music that part can be uh, told later like after say the passive listening of two or three years mm. uh, so maybe the child is uh, like six years or seven years then you can explain mm. simple things about uh, like what kind of rhythm is going on what kind of melodic contour is going on mm. Hmm? Mm. Uh, so if i may what is in suggest yeah. if i may ask because when you say uh, they they could be told you know what's going on so uh, it's it's a lot of it's a, it's a bit difficult to kind kind of find that uh, person or that thing where they are being told what's going on i think it's a whole different set of content that needs to be put out to them right no, no. i'm i'm not i'm not uh, uh, um, speaking about telling them the uh, technical content mm mm-hmm. like oh here is the sum or oh this ragat doesn't uses this note not that kind of uh, information you have to uh, bombard on the child huh? but uh, what is the beauty what what kind of uh, uh, appreciating factor is there in mm-hmm. that kind of music you can exp- like i will share one of uh, my childhood anecdote like uh, my father uh, or my parents were not from musician family but they were uh, in a way very good listeners uh, and my father used to uh, play music at very appropriate points uh, i remember i have a very strong memory as a child uh, like in the morning one fine morning he uh, started the day with playing lata mangeshkar's choti kalesh chhalake that song uh, and then he told me that the song in the film is about the beautiful morning ha mm. huh. and so in our maharashtra there is a form called bhopali which is sung in the morning time ha huh. so such kind of cultural associations uh, i never knew th- at that time that this is based on ragu and then it is a pentatonic scale nothing but oh this is something to do with a beautiful morning and so it is something uh, like culturally embedded thing mm-hmm. like even once uh, i remember uh, 
monsoon was um, arriving and uh, the first day in he played uh, one lp of ustad amir khasab's make and he just explained uh, these clouds are coming down and they are starting for just like it's uh, singing uh, it is like very slow in the uh, earlier phase and later it gets uh, very fast so i was not knowing uh, like oh this is a khayal and the early phase is called as alap and it is bada khayal is slow but he explained me oh this is like a rain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now such kind of similes you can give to your child and now my father was not knowing the grammar of adara mm -hmm. but he knew the cultural associations so he just introduced me uh, mm -hmm. to these cultural associations and that uh, help me in understanding or developing test uh, to indian mail as a kid it's so beautiful in fact i also want to know from mahindra if uh, do you think this is only for children or with somebody like you who's you know uh, very new to the music learning process would you also appreciate this kind of introduction uh, like how dr kunte just uh, shared with us um, or absolutely I, absolutely yeah yeah i mean i am i only hear this that you know uh, you know it's it's more meaningful to associate music with the times of the day or the emotions or the things that are happening around us right so uh, it's much more natural and much more easier to appreciate that way so i would definitely you know uh, get more on that track and have my kids appreciate music in that sense you know i i always had this question you know i i remember you know i had a course in uh, back in when i was in iit bombay uh, so it was it was like a you know very core science course okay so he was teaching some very very complex theory and there was a lot of terminology right that we had to learn so there was one line he used to repeat all the time so he was just teaching us the terminology for three lectures consecutively and people you know so he was he said this is just an initial phase right it's an initial hurdle that you need to cross uh, you know to learn the terminology and once you know it you will really appreciate what i'm telling you right so I, i always had that this thing in my mind so i you know I, i when i relate this to music right i feel if i cross this initial hurdle right even my kids you know if they just you know learn a little bit more you know about uh, all those things that you know for example uh, the khayal and alap and everything right so if they're able to appreciate and associate it with the surroundings you know a little bit patience right more than and and as we all know right there's lot of music around us lot of clutter uh i just you know it's very hard so you know ultimately when i um, what is the time when i know right my kid is loving something right when he that you know the kid really is humming something you know it's kind of you know going along with that so then i i know oh, you know this, this is something very catchy and the kid is catching it up mm -hmm. so you know uh Th that is what you know i feel so with again with shrota house right so i can see my kids are humming the songs that you know you're teaching right so that is the effect they have right so and and they don't know right i mean obviously they don't know the science and art behind it but they appreciate it and in some sense right indirectly it's like passive learning that's you know clicking there so um, yeah i mean absolutely i align with what uh, you know i really appreciate uh, this is the point of view that uh, you know kunte sir was sharing just now Thank you so much. In fact, I uh, also ask uh, sir to tell us about this balance of pushing versus influencing because I'm very curious about that. Yeah, uh, can I add something? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, you mentioned about uh, the atmosphere or ambience in which uh, the kid can listen to music or uh, in general appreciating the music. as a kid so i remember that in my childhood uh, i never appreciated uh, pandit kumar gandharo or kishore amankar even though my father used to play their music hmm? Hmm. but on on the contrary i liked uh, music of bhimsen ji or pandita bisheki or even amir khan sahab now Uh, when i started learning music then i started appreciating kumar ji or kishore tai but not until that i uh, was able to appreciate mm -hmm. later on i th thought about why why it was so mm -hmm. then probably i i understand uh, that uh, 
the kind of music uh, one can say that a kind of music is very introvert and a kind of music is very extrovert um, and when the artist is expressing his own thought process without addressing or without uh, in embracing the audience that kind of music is very hard to appreciate at the early stage and as kishori tai or kumarji's music is of that kind mm. uh, but as kausu kanti mentioned that there are uh, like two groups some are performers who uh, sing for the audiences and there is another group of artists who are more like uh, Uh, having their own path exploring the music with their own terms mm-hmm. now as a child i think uh, you can probably make them listen to the performers rather than the introspective kind of musicians because uh, the kid can quickly get connected to that kind of music and later on you can then introduce to other factors or other uh, uh, sections of musicians like i remember uh, as a kid we had one cassette and on one side there was sitar of pandit ravi shankar and in the same cassette another side there was sitar playing of ustad bilad khasa mm-hmm. now as musicians today we know that they both have a, a totally different uh, kind of style and uh, usually the appreciators of pandit ravi shankar don't like vilat khasab and vice versa mm. but as a kid i was introduced to both styles and without knowing that they are totally from uh, two different poles mm. i actually started appreciating both of them because now see a very intricate part of what my father did uh, when i was very pleasant mood or uh, I, i was like uh, enjoying the stuff here uh, going on in the family uh, setup he used to play ravi shankar ji mm-hmm. his music is very extrovert it's like a festive uh, kind of expression and uh, in uh, in the evening time when everything is on a calm quiet mode or in the night he used to play vilat khasa So now see the dynamics uh, the kind of expression that overall expression that artist gives mm-hmm. like introvert or extrovert or deep somber or uh, happy and cheerful now that kind of connection you can develop with the kids <coughs> then the nuances technical nuances of their stylist like gharana what gharana or what baz they are they it will follow later on if the, the child starts l- learning the music or he, it he or she started uh, starts actively listening to music but for passive listening i think uh, you should give exposure of various kind of music to them and uh, i observe that many children are very sensitive about uh, these kind of uh, folks like uh, i remember when i was uh, in usa for some time and i was teaching also to some kids and my class used to uh, have, have at least 5 or 10 minutes uh, brief listening session in between teaching session mm-hmm. uh, so uh, once i taught a child uh, uh, he was born and brought up in usa and not having a typical indian setup in the home even he was not able to understand hindi or marathi he was only understanding english uh, so in a way it was very hard for me to uh, teach him the compositions the lyrics so, but that the, that kid was very sharp and very his grasping was very good so after teaching him some uh, composition i just played uh, a piece by vina sastrabuddhe ji of the same raga and now as we know vina sastrabuddhe's style of singing is very uh of force or vigorous and uh, it's not like a mellow style and later on i played the same raga uh, sung by 
प्रभात रे जी नाउ द वॉइस क्वालिटी द स्टाइल ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन इज डिफरेंट एंड दैट किड एक्चुअली ग्रास दैट डिफरेंस एंड ही आस्क मी दैट ओ द फर्स्ट पीस दैट यू प्लेड इट वॉज इट समथिंग टू डू विथ like the the singer is telling uh, me something <laughs> and uh, the another piece that that lady was telling uh, something to herself oh wow now see in in other words he he was uh, telling that the uh, the first artist was uh, uh, extrovert and like that kind of differentiation kids can easily make they are totally sensitive to that and i think this kind of sensitivity should be uh, maintained and nourished hmm. otherwise uh, they will make machines out of human beings <laughs> and <laughs> that human uh, sense will be lost correct correct i think um, uh, uh, it's it's so interesting to listen to this because you know because even a while ago selva was mentioning right how do you uh, not impose and help them develop that interest on their own i think all of these things that we just talked about are like bits and pieces we need to just put together mm-hmm. to get that thing out of children because they have it in them it's just the way we speak with them the way we play the the situation which things are played i think uh, all that uh, plays a role in in their absorption and their interest and developing that self sense of uh, interest from within themselves right instead of us imposing it on them and if if it's so for children they are very flexible and they are very pure and they are very open you know as we grow old we probably have our biases right yeah. is there a way in which we can open up adults through the beautiful music that hindustani music is can we can we uh, help them understand um, uh, the importance of being consistently in the zone of this music uh, the creativity that it has within it Uh, the scope of exploration uh, how do you um, kind of draw analogies with your own lives um, with the kind of musical uh, form it is right so there are this this whole space for adults right uh, how similar or different is it um, in terms of what we just spoke uh, maybe dr uh, ganguly can uh, speak a bit and then maybe uh, selva can also share her thoughts sure a uh, very intriguing question indeed Uh, I put this in in the form of language and literature, you know, because uh, when a child is learning a language afresh, there is no unlearning needed because everything is kind of imbibed in a very methodical way. And now the appreciation of music is like following a literature when you know the language, but when you are an adult, there are a lot of like preconceived notions you have to unlearn that barrier. and learn it's like almost like uh, appreciating a foreign language literature for an adult mm-hmm. so you have to start learning the language little bit so for kids it's easier because you know they learn from examples with a blank canvas so like any shape of a fruit or maybe the melody or dhun of a rag or maybe anything they learn from examples and they create their own abstraction with a blank canvas but for adults because it's already populated you have to sometime unlearn that and kind of literate yourself with the language before going into the literature so that's my very brief to uh, that thank you dr costa uh, uh, selva do you think it's easy uh, to to be able to accept the fact that uh, you're very capable uh, you know all the adults all of us adults are very capable of assimilating something very new that is uh, been put to us in a very interesting way uh, and some challenges that you might have faced say for this space of hindustani music how easy or difficult was it for you to um, get into the groove of starting to like it did your child help you get interested or what were the other uh, you know we would like to know some things uh, on sure sure very interesting question actually madhu how uh, children learn pedagogy you are actually talking about pedagogy how children learn how adults learn how human learn uh, i'll share my personal example because i'm so uh, because i'm used to uh, or or rather i'd say because i have um, uh, acquired the taste of carnatic music and its uh, structure mm. uh, i find it easier to 
listen to it mm. i know when it how it begins i know how it, middle part is how it ends i get drawn to certain things even concerts are very very different mm. i mean for me if i were to say uh, for me carnatic music yeah, carnatic concerts are like firecrackers i mean <laughs> they i mean you you're literally jumping on your seat for every other uh, you know uh, charanam or whatever right so but i find a uh, uh, hindustani absolutely different my experience my personal experience, my listening experience is uh it's very nuanceical it's very very nuanceical and uh, unstructured or i uh, abstract mm. abstract mm. so as a parent who is not familiar with hindustani music firstly i have a challenge uh in building and that taste firstly mm. like uh, you know uh pastu kanti was mentioning i don't know what to focus on because uh I don't know Madhu doesn't live with me. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> also, I would love to keep her at my home. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a sense, if I may, can be absolutely honest, I am seeking a guru hmm. in my own self about how do I learn, listen, hmm. so that I can then uh, guide my child in small aspects. Right? There is Gopali. There is uh, you know. why is it so beautiful i am unable to express it in a way that excites the child mm-hmm. or should i even attempt it like uh, like kunte sir was saying don't even get into technicality you know that's what he said mm-hmm. maybe this is technicality i don't know uh, so for, for me the challenge is that uh, how do i be- genuinely build my own interest mm-hmm. and learn what to listen to either passively or actively and then transcend that for the child Mm. I mean, what I what really touched me today is the anecdote of comparing it to the rain, mm. uh, or uh, comparing it or uh, similes of morning moods and evening moods, mm. or even uh, Kausu Kanti's uh, uh, paying attention to the fast and slow. Mm. How do you even pay? How what do you really see in a fast beat song versus a slow motion long alap? Mm. Uh, they say right uh, meditation there's very stark uh, difference thin line between meditating and sleeping mm-hmm. <laughs> in sleeping you are not very active in meditation you are absolutely alert but you both both states have closed eyes mm-hmm. yes in and fact that subtlety is so difficult to understand you know as a parent i am i am so restless in a sense oh god i know the magic of it but i firstly don't know how to understand it and then translate <laughs> it for the child yeah i th- i think that's so uh, interesting uh, you know like you said there are very la- layers again you know layers of assimilating any subject uh, especially music is a simplest that way it has a very basic layer which just gets into you anyway you know without you having to worry about anything beyond it beyond that absorption you know so a lot of times i think with dr kunja also we we have used the word absorption even with dr uh, kosto the absorption element is very strong in music and you don't have to really understand it after you know until a certain age so from a layman's perspective outside of concerts and lectins right um you know how do they even get into this um this zone uh where there have been there is enough talking about music and there is enough um uh the wow factor is a lot you know somebody there with you to appreciate it just with you to appreciate and say wow you know instead of you alone sitting and thinking maybe it's really nice maybe i'm having my own perspective you know so what's your take on that mahindra have you experienced this the need of something like this absolutely so i i would like to draw an analogy here so for example uh, think of like uh, you know as a as a as a layman right so i'm watching a match right uh, a sports or something like that right usually there are there are not just two parties there is a third party right who is usually a commentator or someone who appreciates and you know tells me what's going on you know what to look for you know what to appreciate or what is not good or what is really good you know something that helps me you know unknowingly i learn more and more about that uh, that uh, that sport or you know that art that is ongoing you know uh, you know something like that if we have you know here right so an artist some, something that bridges the gap between the artist and the audience right mm-hmm. uh, and you know takes audience to the next level slowly slowly you know i'm not saying that it's not going to happen overnight but very very slowly you know something a third uh, entity that sits in between us and you know uh, gets them more you know kind of closer 
to each other mm. and if you do have that kind of a third entity uh, would you be interested to invest that kind of time and you know uh, effort to be so consistent about it like you you build the passion for it over time right nothing happens in one session or a week or a month things take time and like we said acquired taste right it takes time so there is there a way you know maybe dr kunte or uh, dr kostu can tell the the motivation levels that kind of fluctuate a lot these days due to various factors what are some tips on how to maintain that kind of uh consistency and not um, uh you know outside of uh, you know attending concerts uh, is there a way music itself or hindustani music itself uh, is is a means to um attaining this kind of uh, you know in, uh, elongated attention span and the passion uh, does music itself do it or do you think there is something outside of the music itself which uh, could help this process maybe dr uh, kasthup can go first if you like sure i think uh, there is a latent time that is needed uh, to maybe someone to push the right questions so that you seek answers from mm. for example uh, like i i latch on my discussion more towards the listeners who are not aspiring performers but at least want to learn music mm. so for them uh, like can so Indian music is very much like a reverse engineering method. So you learn the grammar from examples. Mm. So there is very little described concert uh, procedures. Rather than there are prescriptions and there are good examples from stall work. You kind of reverse engineer to know the rules, extract the grammar from it. So if you are given the right questions, mm. then you seek to follow more and more uh, like examples. and then find similarities between them dissimilarities between them pattern between them so this kind of pattern recognition is a very natural human uh, brain processing and after all we are listening with the brain so hearing with the ear but listening with brain if you are actively listening mm. so if you are engaging and listening with the brain then these right questions will drive you to like seek answers from and there are enough good examples so you like may clearly do a pattern recognition like go for the same rag as chetan dada was telling the same rag played by different artists look for similarities look for differences what is this, their approach even not in technical very abstracted way even not in syntactical very semantic way but yeah. if you have the right questions you formulate answers and then that will kind of cyclically drive you to get more questions yeah. and i think that's enough the music itself uh, can give you motivation to uh, drive through this great thank you dr kunte do you want to add to that here i remember uh, uh, there is a method of teaching music called suzuki method mm. uh, you you must be knowing about that so in that method the kid is accompanied with the parents at least one uh, of the parents in the music sessions learning sessions and he has also to understand what the kid is learning and later on um the the sessions go on uh, with like the parents also developing the interest or they developing the understanding of music if not actually they performing or trying to play the music or sing the music mm. uh, so this kind of engagement uh, of parents and kids mm. uh, it it can help uh, the grown ups in like in inculcating inculcating the music uh, secondly i think uh, as the attention span is not just uh, decreasing in uh, in the kid section it is also uh, same thing with the adults <laughs> like yeah. even adults we don't have uh, thanks to the uh, current media that it has decreased our attention span uh, like in a 25 minute uh, episode you have breaks many uh, many breaks and commercial breaks and everything like even fade outs and uh, blackouts in between the so naturally our attention span is uh, decreasing mm. but in that sense actually to increase the attention span like uh, there are two three uh, methods you can increase your attention span just as a listener not not as a 
musician or learning uh, music like you can try to assimilate whatever you have listened to in the same piece earlier and then you can mentally jot it down and then put it uh, in framework your own framework hmm. and in that sense you can uh, try to connect it with your life experiences like what kind of uh, visual imagery you can think of with this this kind of music or what kind of emotional experience you had earlier and you can connect with music which is going on or what kind of uh, say painting you have uh, seen and you can connect with this music going on now as a, as a musician i don't believe in uh, having such kind of connections because for us music is pure and we don't uh, just rely on such connections but as a listener you can have these connections mm. because it's very important uh, for at least raga sangeet because it's in a way very abstract music it is not thematic music or the words don't convey the meaning in that sense like like a film song it is a concrete music because it conveys the uh, uh, idea or theme of the song with concrete lyrics or poetic content mm. there is no such signal uh, in rag sangeet even though we use the words or lyrics for vocal compositions we are not projecting that poetic meaning when we are singing the rag or we are elabor elaborating the rag and naturally um, to grasp uh, this kind of music it's like like understanding the abstract painting mm -hmm. <laughs> and for that i think as a listener you can uh, try to build a, a connection with your life experiences and then you can uh, probably develop the taste uh, of listening to music and you can probably understand it and later on you can go into the technicality oh what what rag is this or what genre is this or uh, oh this is singing tan or this is sar mm -hmm. it will follow later but you can actually try uh, to have this kind of connections and which will help you enjoy the music and then it also can help you uh, to have a longer attention span uh now responding to uh, dr kausu uh, kandit's uh, explanation about uh, uh, like listening uh, like reverse engineering and pattern uh, uh, recognition is very important point that he has raised like uh, as a raga rag sangeet practitioner i always think that uh, kids can very easily do things huh. like i again remember uh, one of my workshop in usa and why i'm giving the uh, uh, examples of the uh, my teaching experience in usa because there uh, out of that music class or the the home of the indian parents there is no uh, or there is a lack of indianness in the surroundings and even in that uh, condition if the child can uh, decipher the music then why not indian or the uh, kids here can do that and that's why i'm giving the example like i was uh, teaching a chaturang composition in malhar and interestingly that composition as as we know chaturang has four uh, ang or four aspects like poetry sargam then uh, the syllables of tabla or pakhavaj and syllables of tarana so uh, the that kind of composite composition they the kids enjoyed very much and actually i i didn't told them earlier that oh this is chaturang composition but when i was teaching them they started deciphering oh oh i have learned the tarana uh, and in this uh, there is there is line this similar to tarana huh? 
So the kids are in a way very sensitive in responding to such kind of, uh, or they can decipher the patterns. And interestingly, that composition each line starts from different matra of the tala cycle. And these children, mind you, actually grasp it very quickly. And <laughs> when I teach this composition to the Indian students here, even the university department students, they cannot grasp it very quickly. <laughs> but these uh, kids like uh, from 6 to 10 age group, hmm. they got a hold on that composition very quickly because they don't have inhibitions. <laughs> ah. And everything is um, new for them or everything is out of blue for them. So, like uh, here, there is a Raag Malhar, it is a very difficult Raag. So, such kind of inhibitions are not uh, there. So, kids can uh, uh, appreciate and learn it quickly. Even I, uh, here in Pune, I was uh, conducting a workshop for kids. Uh, like from fourth standard to sixth standard kids, and I taught them a ragamala uh, with a samay chakra element, like from the morning time, then afternoon raga, then evening raga. Likewise, it was uh, the ragamala itself uh, was like ragamala swabe atha prahareti. So there are change of raga in each line, and I uh, didn't told them that. Have raga changes and this rag is of morning or this is after nothing. I uh, taught them just like a film song or any kind of song or uh, and they, they got it very quickly and their music teacher was standing there and she said, oh, how do you uh, make them to internalize this? Because I teach them Bhairo and after learning Bhairo, they cannot sing the Aro of Sarang. <laughs> How do you uh, do that? So I, I told her that, uh, see, I'm not uh, giving them uh, like pressured with the grammar uh, of the rag, like this rag, this rage should then this rage formal. Like the, uh, my observation, like uh, the kids very easily grasp the melodic contour. But you have to uh, uh, portray them just like any any song or any poem they learn in the school mm -hmm. with that kind of ease then they can appreciate in fact um, uh, you know also part of the reason why uh, we were having this kind of a discussion on listening exclusively and appreciation was uh, because you know at shota house you're also trying to launch something for adults who are new to music, who are musically children, who are exploring and wanting to know more. So we thought of, you know, launching this program called Concert Express, where uh, it's it's a very seamless way of uh, getting into the groove of music listening, you know, uh, outside and not going the vocal music lesson way, you know, sing, sing this hundred times, practice, practice, and not that route, because then you don't want to perform at the end or do anything about it really. So you're busy with your work, you have a job, you have your family, but you just need that kind of space to uh, musically connect with yourself and with some very nice people with you uh, who are enjoying something with you and who are connecting their, uh, you know, life, like we said, right, uh, their experiences with the music and we share those experiences. And I think that uh, really retains a lot of the musical element also when you have this kind of uh, setup. I think this is what we want to do through this program as well. And part of this discussion was also to kind of, um, uh, you know, ensure that we uh, incorporate all those interesting, uh, you know, thoughts that you put across all of you, you know, for that matter. And um, it's been a very, very beautiful discussion. Uh, I would like maybe um, uh, Dr. Uh, Kostov to please, um, you know, uh, give us one last insight with the concluding question about uh, what it takes for uh, a modern parent today, right? Or a working professional, right? To become uh, a music lover or uh, uh, what, what does it take really to appreciate Hindustani music? Okay, I'll be very simple and brief. Uh, first is the intent. You need to want and really want to 
uh, appreciate this music. The second is uh, there are a lot of processes which are complementary and supplementary. Like you listen and let the music be loved. So you don't have to pay attention. Like you don't have to do anything for it. Just give it time. Just give it attention. And may it be passive listening, active listening. Uh, but the intention should be there. And like maybe uh, as Chaitanya Dada was saying, audition is very important. So in abundance of YouTube material, maybe just pay more attention in audition. Listen to the music. Let it like uh, imbibe and get through your nerves and like mind and let it sip in. And then also uh, maybe attend a couple of live concerts, be in the environment. Because, you know, ultimately, like even if it's digital acoustic, being in the concert setup like that vibe is really important. So when you listen to a musician singing live from a small, short distance, maybe attend a baitak, so that will definitely get you interested and intent uh, to learn or appreciate that music. Very beautifully said. Hopefully, uh, you know uh, we bring out some programs that. Uh, uh, you know, kind of leverage these insights that you all shared today. I would also like to thank um, each of you for taking out time and uh, being part of this very beautiful discussion.